Thank you so much for joining me. I have my lovely guest here. Well, he's not lovely. He's a very masculine, manly man, but you know how it is. I have with me Henry Hollywood Morris. Thank you so much for joining me. How are you? I am great. Well, I'm great now that I'm on with you. We have something very, very important that we need to discuss. So um, how I discovered you, or should I say, you actually discovered me, and then I ended up discovering that you discovered me. (laughs) Correct. And I was quite intrigued because um, during the pandemic, you went on a very extensive journey all over the country, helping churches um, with their audiovisual media needs, since we know that many churches had to transition to more of a digital model. Now- I just wanted to be known and go on record. I am not saying that there's anything wrong with a church having a robust media ministry. That That is not the issue. What we saw during the pandemic was that churches were starting to rely on this digital remote church because Absolutely. they were unwilling um, to obey scripture and start to gather sooner rather than later. Um, many of the people that I rolled in, right. in my circles, by May of 2020, we were back Correct. Uh, gathering, having a regular worship. But something that I noticed um, with churches, and I, I, I don't mean to be offensive, but you guys, y'all know who I am. Um, when I discuss things like this, churches that tended to be more doctrinally sound and held to a very, um, they had a high view of scripture and understood the purpose of the church. Those churches started to start gathering way sooner than a lot of the churches that I would go on record and say are more on the apostate side. Um, They don't have a high view of scripture and they are religious gatherings or religious institutions but they don't really mirror or mimic New Testament churches. So before we get into that topic, talk to me a little bit about what you experienced behind the scenes of the, we're, we're, we're actually terming it the Afrostocracy. These yeah. are a segment of the, 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 the politicians, the preachers, yeah. the pundits, the professors, and the performers. Correct. Right now, we're going to spend some time talking about the faith-based component of that, the yes. preacher, Afro, what, what would you call afro Delano <laughs> <laughs> would be able to answer that. Yeah, right, yeah. right. Delano right. would be able to answer that because uh, when, when he introduced, I have to give him total credit, you know, right. he introduced that term and I said, nothing better. I, I don't have anything better that describes what we're dealing with. Right. So um, to, to follow your point on that side, April, what I saw was, like you said, behind the scenes. And, and, and let me say this, April, what happens behind the scenes eventually makes its way out to the pulpit and then out to the community. Right. So there was a complete or, or nearly complete abandoning the scripture and we went into this whole group thing mm. and anyone and it, and it was a group thing that was you started to hear the same slogans and buzz phrases follow the science right stay home stay safe and you if you remember i mean we're, we're almost dealing three years ago t- to this week Yep. Uh, April, when we started dealing with this, no one had an issue with that. April, two months in, maybe. Right. But I'm talking 16 months. 18, 22 18, months. 24. Yeah. And the right. same thing was being said. I think the bigger slap in the face or a wake up call for me was when you questioned it, the, the answer was that's white privilege. Then I'm like, wait a minute, we're wait, starting. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a Something minute. Else. You actually, so when you would question and push back against the prevailing narrative, right. the response was that that's white privilege. White privilege, white supremacy. And I'm like, where is this? This is just a stupid talking point. I'll give you an example of when. Right. There was the pastor in Indiana. He gained national prominence because, you know, his his story was picked up 
by Fox News. Mm. And so what he was saying, if you remember, April, he was like, why are liquor stores open? Why why can a father take his child to get an abortion, his daughter? Mm -hmm. You know, why are strip clubs open, but the church has to remain closed? And so that was all I brought up in one of these groups was that, okay, it's great that we're able to do this, but does anybody catch what he's saying? Why are, why is this the only option? Right. So I saw it as basically almost if if you take a military strategy, like that whole fight in the war on two fronts, because Mm -hmm. you had the one where you don't question the narrative and we have to trust the science, although it was funny, remember we had a, a, a particular vice president that said, well, when she wasn't vice president, she had no interest that in had no she had no faith that the vaccine was safe and effective. But that right, yes, right. And she advised that, she actually advised that she would not be taking the correct, correct. Mm-hmm. that change and you watched how the aristocracy all jumped in line. The I think the second part of that was the control by fear. Mm. And that was both, I I say, frustrating and and I I think very saddening to watch that happen because in some circles, April, they literally framed this like, and it makes sense when you look at the larger picture, but that COVID-19 is just attacking Black people. Right. So that was the initial narrative <laughs> right. that was, I distinctly remember very early on, this may have been around April yes. during the pandemic, when I was hearing them say, you know, Black people are being, you know, targeted and Correct. it's disproportionately harming us. Correct. And because of my health and wellness background, I actually did some content about that. And I said, well, let's examine that because th- that's not the right question. The question you need to ask yourself is, why is it that a respiratory virus is disproportionately attacking people who have one to three comorbidities where you need to have a robust immune system and strong respiratory system in yes. order to fight back? Yes. Um, they didn't want to have that conversation. They didn't want right. to talk about the obesity de- epidemic. They didn't want to talk about the metabolic issues, high blood pressure and diabetes that statistically are our lifestyle Correct. diseases, they just, it was easier to say that the virus was a racist. Correct. As opposed to us taking personal responsibility and saying, this is a good opportunity for us to examine our life and what we're doing, because now that this threat has come upon us, our defenses are down and we don't have anything to fight back. Correct. What was pushed uh, almost unanimously Mm. April amongst the uh, churches that I work with was totally, totally the opposite right. of what you were saying. And like I said, the, the then the frustrating part was to see where that other P came into play, where particular politicians knew they could reach out yes. and get their talking points and their propaganda into the pews by, you know, having these Zoom meetings <laughs> with, with the preacher. And I'm like, where's the discernment? We're, we're the, the, like you said, the medical background is just being thrown out of the window. You know, someone right. who's married to a physician. I was like, she, you know, her take on it was like, we're, this is totally backwards. This is not the first time. Uh, very early on, she pointed out something. She was like, do you understand what the 19 is for? Mm-hmm. So there was an 18, a 17, a 16. We didn't right. do any of this. So, <laughs> no, I don't uh, know. But the, like I said, the, I guess the, the injury, the insult was that if you question that narrative, mm. that is where we've gone to the one shield that has become basically synonymous every time. Now, this is some form of whiteness or you think that you have white privilege or the rules don't have to apply how right. dare you question? Let me yeah. ask you this. Um, yeah. in, when you in your travels, when mm-hmm. you were visiting a lot of these churches, did you notice that many of them were actually sites for virus testing? Did you notice that you and I don't know, I'm asking because I yes. don't know, but th- yes. that these places were 
these churches were places that where you could actually come and, you know, get jabbed. Right. Yes. Like some of them later on, April, not not initially, not in the right. beginning, not in the first phase of 2020, but right. more so in 2021 and on and still now <laughs> you, you still have that, you know, you still have that in play. Um, but the messaging was was the, the echoing of the keep yourself isolated, stay at home. <laughs> Wear three masks. Yes, wear three masks. Well, they're still masked in service now. You can come back. Yes. But you can keep on that mask. And, but make sure you send that. You know, you can go online and send that donation. That, that oh, you yeah. will do. Absolutely. Right, <laughs> right. Good, Abra, but right, don't come here. Yes, don't, don't come here. So when you when you watch this unfold and yes. you're like, OK, they're, they're calling me because I need to come and, yes. you know, provide a service. Yes. Right. And you're observing the. Were many of these these churches, um, even though they were operating remotely. Yes. Um, did you see a heavy push for. We're not going to come back. We're going to continue this model. Um, and so was it, did they position it and frame it like this was some sort of altruistic thing? Like they were doing the right thing and just trying to keep, it was all about the safety. Like talk to me a little bit about that. Woo. <laughs> that, that may be a documentary. So <laughs> because oh, wow. people, that was absolutely what was done and the reason why 2020 of course for the world it, it'll be a year you know like our grandparents they they never forget if they were alive 1941 in Pearl Harbor or, or 1963 in JFK right mm -hmm. this is going to be you know not only for us and 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 the millennials and and Gen Z because of what you said the way that it was handled was a microcosm of how everything else is. Vody Bauckham talks about jamming and how you jam the messaging in. That's what I don't know if we really understood it because it was so, I guess, ingrained on other things. But this was something new, April. This was something no, new. No, I, 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 listen, I am not trying to sound like I, I'm a prophet or I just have like some insight in the spirit. <laughs> but when I tell you, Brother Morris, I knew. From the jump, and I told my husband, I was like, "This is going. This is the long road. Like we're gonna be here for yes. a while." I was already informing. I didn't have a YouTube platform at the time, yes. but I was informing people who were in my circle and in my sphere of influence. I was like, "Listen, this is all, guys. All you gotta do is take this, that, and the third. Strengthen your immune system." We're going to be okay. Like, there's right. no reason for us to be freaking out and acting right. like this. Um, I just knew very early on. I was like, this is going to be politicized. And it is a ploy to destroy the country and change life as we know it and put Absolutely. us on the path to something else. So you mentioned yes. the word jamming. Yes. It's so interesting that even still to this day, there is no conversation about the imp what the importance of a healthy immune system. And what people can do, not something that needs to be done to them, but yes. what they can do to just have a robust immune system and have it, uh, uh, an alternative response. If they're like, I don't want this injection, I'm just going to do this instead. You're not allowed to have that conversation. Correct. And remember, you, you asked everyone, like, what, you know, how was this being implemented? One of the the phrases that I mean, it it drove me up the wall was watching pastors keep promoting. This is our new normal. Yeah, this was 2020. Mm -hmm. This and and I'm like, why? Why? You know that that was. I, I don't know if there was a memo that went out, but almost like when you you saw the response to, and, and you covered it, and you did an excellent job last year on the rightful reversal of Roe and how the talking points seem to be parroted from pulpits. Right. For maybe a two-month period, every 
broadcast, someone had to interject, this is our new normal. Right. So they had to keep re- reiterating it yes. and, and reinforcing it so yes. that it becomes like we become little parrots. We just yes. say it. Correct. Uh, and, right. and, and those who didn't, us, we're the nonconformists. Yeah. So those of us who continue to travel, you know, who continue to gather, we became dangerous. And I was like, no one sees. Now, again, I know we do, but I, I, I was talking about in these churches like this have you ever heard of 1984 have you yeah. ever heard of george orwell it's what we were living. you understand you literally have and so this was the other part of that so it so it extended april beyond um services you know whether it's sunday or wednesday or two midweek you know bible yeah. studies then it became funeral and that was also heartbreaking because so in those cases, uh, my task is to put, you know, the memorials together uh, for for the deceased family member. And then this is streaming because, you know, so I, I get it to the church. They get it to the uh, funeral director. Right. And so the families can't gather then either. So this prolonged isolation and uh, during that time, you know, dear friends, you know, like from high school to lose parents and there's no even expectation that there can be, you know, a time to get together. We're all just sending condolences over the phone. People accepted that as okay. It was was almost like you had to have like, you you know, your funeral kit, which included your mask. Correct. You know, and this is when they started gathering. Yeah, that's exactly. That's when you were actually back in person. Correct. Right, and it's going to be 10 of y'all. Yes. Including the deceased. So that's yeah. nine. Um, and I, yeah, that was very um, heartbreaking because there are right. people that I love and respect that had to bury loved ones who, you know, unfortunately, due to the modern medical response, yes, um, the treatments were what, what was what harmed a lot of people, but Correct. they couldn't even have a proper memorial Correct. because of the fear of, well, it could be a super spreader event. Yeah, remember that. There was a whole, but there was a whole segment of the country that had already started going back to church. None of us were dropping dead. Then you had a whole segment of the country on that side that was rioting and protesting. And and I thought, again, this is back to, to the jamming where um, it was like that stage of delusion became obvious because even if up until 2020, April, you had trust and belief in the CDC. Mm. When they came out and said, well... Mass protests and mostly peaceful riots don't spread COVID, but you singing in your praise group at church does. That's the part where I was like, what else do we need to hear, shepherds, to realize what is going on? Did you ever have any close conversations just like, listen, off the record, I I just I need to ask you this. like. Are, at, at what point are you going to stop participating in this theater and bring your people back? Did, were you ever able to have those conversations? Yes. And uh, I know three of them right off the top of my head. Like I said, you know, I won't go into the names, but of course not. Yeah. they're the response. The reason why this is interesting, April, because the response for each one is different and, mm-hmm. and listen to it shows you, but it ties into the bigger problem. One, they were totally convinced that if they catch COVID, they're going to die. So there was there were shepherds that yeah. had a fear of death. Correct. Okay. April, I'm literally talking about running out of the sanctuary. Listen to what I'm about to tell you. We're in the middle of the recording. It's only the two of us because that's that's the whole setup. So literally, you're talking about months on end right. over a year, and just the 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 video producer and and the pastor. When that call came in from CVS that that shot was ready, left me in there with the camera, took See. off. <laughs> I called my wife up like you got to believe this. All right, all right. So 
I need a I need a moment to compose myself because <laughs> I, I have to do two things at the same time. Yes. I have to deal with the fact that that was a reality. That level of fear was a reality for some Correct. people. They did not know any better. Correct. And then I have to deal with the reality of the fact that on one sense, it's sad, but then on the other sense, it's comical. And then it is outright. I'll put it like this. <laughs> I don't understand how a person who is a born again believer who has placed their faith and trust in the sovereign God of the universe. I'm not talking about some super spiritual. Oh, right. and I'm going to handle snakes and nothing's going to yeah. harm me. That's yes. not what I mean. Yes. I'm talking about we have an eternal hope. Correct. And I remember when our church started gathering that first week, we all were allowed to kind of just let our feelings out. And I just yes. raised my hand. I said, listen, I just want y'all to know that, you know, if, if something were to happen and I would suc- was going to succumb to this virus, there's no there, there's nobody else I want to go out with than with the people of God. So yes. if I'm going down, I'm going down with y'all. Now, that's right. me. Correct. Because I, I do think different. Yes, I have a husband. Yes, I have children. No, I, I ain't ready to go today. Yes. But because I have a heavenly hope, I'm just like, well, if that's my time, I'm going. How does the shepherd have such a weak faith to where they can't re- they can't say, you know, yes, we need to be cautious. Yes, we need to be concerned. But I'm not going to let this rule and reign over my life. I have people to shepherd. Yes. Well, let me give you the second conversation that that might help it a little bit more. Okay. So the second. So that first one was a much older. Right. That, the second was some actually who's younger than us. And he disagreed that this was going on this long. But at this point, he had so much pushback from the church itself that he's literally trying to respond like we, we would do um, surveys. Right. Like, we well, 98% surveys, of yes. the church is not comfortable coming Correct. back. Okay. I have a problem with that, though. I understand. Yes. Oh, I know why. Correct. Yes. If, if, if what they say in the black community is true, that the pastor is one of the most powerful people in the community. Yes. You mean to tell me you couldn't bring truth to bear and tell your people the truth? Like, listen. Some of y'all are not going to believe me. Some of y'all already know. And some of y'all are indifferent, but we've been hoodwinked and they've been in th- th- what's what you the prevailing narrative that's out there is Correct. not true. Correct. And we're God's people. We are commanded to not forsake the assembling of ourselves. Right. You need to make your way on back here. Yes. Now, let me take you to the third one. So this was. A brother who who essentially thought we've been tricked. Right. He's like, I think he was half and half. He was like, okay, maybe in the beginning, this is being over, this is being overblown at this point. Right. It's 2021. You know, it's it's 2021. Right. Like but, I see people out every day with no mask on. I'm still here with a mask on. Maybe it's okay to take it off. Like correct. But the concern for them was. There were threats that if some if a member did catch it, the liability of the church and a lawsuit. And I was like, wow, we have gone. This train is <laughs> this. This is is really gone. Well, how come they don't have that same kind of energy when they be laying hands on folks and then they fall out and somebody bust their head open? You ain't worried about being sued then. You like, hey, that's in the Lord's hands. You want right. to hear it. Well, this is this is why this this whole thing for me, April, is it, like come full circle because um, I wouldn't say I grew up in the church because my parents only attended on like hot special holidays, Easter, oh, okay. because church was more so daycare. Now, my grandparents helped build that church, but mm-hmm. it was a holiness church. Uh, so you are kind of traumatized by, like you said, by some of this stuff. Okay, so you know where I'm going. Yeah. Uh but like you said, when I first started um, working with so many, I mean, April, we're talking about Kojic, Church of God, um, AME, AME, AMEZ, um, um, 
you see different things, you know, a lot of different things, right? It's different. Yes. And so that's what I can say that you just knocked out of the park. Like you cover. So when I started, when I was not doing uh, websites, it was covering revivals. And so, I mean, April, we got people centipeding down the aisle, uh, you know, the, the, the stanky leg, the Holy <laughs> Ghost style. And like you said, falling and no one had a concern yet now COVID, and we can't move or breathe. breathe. Right. They don't have they don't take that same level of precaution. Matter of fact, the church Correct. I grew up with, a lady sued. She did sue the church because the pastor laid hands on her. Yes. And she fell and was and got injured and she yes. tried to sue. Uh, I don't think that lawsuit went anywhere. <laughs> but she she tried it. She sure did. Came up, came back to church with a cane like two weeks later. We was like, really? Really? (laughs) So, and getting getting back with this, the the Afrostocracy conversation, the gatekeepers, the people who were um, keeping the shtick going by not telling the truth to their people, not being faithful to scripture and God's word, like, hey, we need to gather. So, it sounds like, based on your observation with the responses from those three pastors, that you had, you know, fear of man, an inability to stand up for truth and righteousness, and then pragmatism. Right. Those three things were what was guiding their decision at the spiritual health of their church members, um, and just for just for the sake of not wanting to stick out, because churches that were gathering were sticking out like a sore thumb. Absolutely, I, it, it, and and some started to be persecuted. More right. so on the West Coast than right. than, than here. Right. Uh, now, mind you, I'm in the free state of Florida. Hashtag Ron DeSantis. But <laughs> yeah, we weren't having it. <laughs> right. So a lot of people, a lot of churches on the West Coast and in the Northeast, you know, yes. they did experience um, some persecution. And then, Correct. you know, our neighbors to the north up in Canada, I know Pastor Green. James Coates, yes. um was actually incarcerated right. because yes. he refused to stop gathering. Correct. My question is, as it relates to the black community, um, I can see how a lot of people are like, I don't trust these 5013C church organizations because at the end of the day, it is not about for Christ I live and for Christ I die and that we're aliens passing through and we're going to be persecuted. They're actually looking for the path of least resistance. And so the pandemic was one example where these individuals, these gatekeepers were kind of keeping or mimicking the same narrative that the government was pushing. And this is one reason why you had so many of our people deceived and even to this day still don't know the truth of what really was happening during that pandemic. With that being said, I want to shift over into how this spilled over into politics. Yes. In your capacity, working in media and working with these organizations and these auxiliary groups. Yes, correct. um, I noticed that I'm not saying this does not happen in white churches. I'm sure it does, but not to this extent. There was almost like a marriage between the black church and the Democratic Party. And I've never seen a marriage consummated this way where these churches were pushing one particular um, political narrative yes. through coercion, threats. Uh, you know, it was, it's almost like spiritual abuse. Talk to me about what you witnessed on your travels of how these churches were um, pushing a particular narrative in order to steer the decision making, uh, making of their people a certain way. Yes. Uh, I think that, again, to go back to the wonderful episodes that you've had that have all led up to this. Again, I go back to uh, Pastor Virgil Walker again. The foundation was already laid. Everything was already in place. This was just pulling a lever. Ah, okay. And so I say that with watching things incrementally and and uh, Delano, Chad all said the same thing to you when they noticed the shift in 08. I would say I would go four years. I think I'm old. I know I'm older than Delano. I may be older than Chad. I would go four years before that. I would go 04. 
And the reason why I go there is after the election in 20 in 2004. So mm -hmm. Bush beats Bush. Kerry. Right. And the fallout from that, you know, some of them are too young to remember. You may be able to go back, but Sharpton, all the all the, the gatekeepers, the Wranglers, the yes. Aristocracy. Exactly. They're all on TV. And he said something that was very telling. And to me, the wheel started moving after that. Remember, the, one of the big issues that they said they lost on was traditional marriage. Ah. And so Al said then that we have issues. The left church has issues, too. And we need to focus on those issues that I'm paraphrasing, mm -hmm. you know, from then. And that's from that shift on. It was like, OK, well, we can't. We may not be able to wipe it out, but we can totally come in and we can subvert it. You know, we, we, we can mess up the message and we can take the focus off where it should be using right. similar language. Mm. And we can get this going in a different direction if we really focus on it. And especially if you give us the right imagery. So, yes. 2008. Right. So all we can believe in. Right. So what I saw in 2020, when, when, like you said, when the political side came into play was let's shift this into overdrive. And there was really no distinction. And I fought the shepherds for that, for basically following the lead of their, you know, basically political handlers yes. on what to do who to engage with. And, and like I said, the eerie part, April, was the talking points. Yes. That's what made it seem so Orwellian is that you'll hear the same thing from the pulpit that you can turn on CNN and MSNBC and CBS said, and we know that they don't claim to be followers of Christ there. Right. But why are we getting it inside what should be the Lord's house, like to give you an extreme example of one. And, and, and it was done. Here's how it was done. It wasn't always April verbatim from the pulpit. It could be think, creative things like spoken word and ah. plays. And, and like the whole point of this was chastising. There was one I'll never forget. It was chastising people like us. You black entrepreneurs that y'all don't want to stay y'all behind home and sit down somewhere. This country wasn't made for you. This economy wasn't made for you. Why are you putting us all at risk? Now, again, it's rhymed and it's got music behind it. But I'm like, what? Now you done made me. I, I wasn't even, I ain't even had nothing to be mad about. <laughs> no, well, well, hold on. Really? really? You know what? You are probably. I'm going to send that to you. I'm going to send that to you because it's still online. This oh. is how you end up on woke preacher clips. And then you complain that it's white supremacy. supremacy. But, but I'll, I'll go back to something. So let me give you a, a, a little bit of uh, extra background, April. So, you know, working with all of these churches, I, I found out something, a very valuable lesson many, many years ago. Mm -hmm. And that was. When I first started this 20 years ago, I did not have separation. What I mean, so there I had to have a church that was our church that had nothing to do with production. It so happens that the churches, so uh, almost yeah, 20 years ago was the first time I started attending uh, Calvary Chapel, Fort Lauderdale. Mm -hmm. So that's not a quote unquote, you know, black church. Right. So. It's not like you said, I can vouch for what you're saying, that there is a completely different dynamic between political affiliations and who gets pulpit time and how that plays out and the way things are framed. My ex personal experience for 20 years of working here mm -hmm. and worshiping here has been two completely different realities. And it was, right. and so mind you, that's bringing that home. Like I, you're saying, I'm flying out, I'm going here and I come back. And like you said, it's a month later and we're back to in-person. A lot of the older members were more so hesitant to come. Right. Everyone understood that, but it, it is a completely different, different. approach. 
Right. So it was this almost is something that it seems like that is very unique to <laughs> Well, it was almost as if we were living in two different realities. Correct. It was almost like a memo went out and said, you know, um, here's the truth, take it or leave it, go live your life. Yes. And people just did not want to accept it. And they felt comfortable going along with what everybody else was doing, even if they couldn't legitimize it or make it make sense. Like if you would ask people, like, explain to me why you're in the car with the mask on. Or explain hey, to me why you're walking down the street and there's a mask around you. April, he, he, here is... I got to hit you with this because I think that is something that I think that this is the warm up. April. This is this. We, we may think this has been really crazy, but this just may be the pregame warm up to what is coming because you literally have seen families torn apart. It happens. To mine. It happens. Right. To mine. Yes. And so we, we, we experience this as well. And definitely know of others like they literally took a side. Yeah. And of course, the election just, you know, branch reached that even further than what it was. But even today, April, this is what what are we? Uh, February 22nd. 2020. I was just in Fort Lauderdale, April, this past a, 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 a week ago today. I flew down. OK. Up until Sunday. There are still people at a bus stop. It's no one else there with a mask on. It's a, <clears throat> so remember the name Yuri Bezmanov mm. in 1984 is when he gives that interview, you know, after he's defected from the Soviet Union. Right. And he's mm-hmm. talking about this gradual subversion. And he explains how they're going to do it. And he says, number one is demoralization. And remember, he's like, that's a 15, 20 year period. Process. Right. Process. And I, I would say in his example, I thought he was using more of the Eastern Bloc without a strong foundation in Christ. You know, you're so I was like, I think it takes much longer here because right. you've had pushback. You, you know, you get eight years of Reagan. But it still has happened. Mm -hmm. And and the example that he gave, he goes on and he says, April, you can show them with concrete proof the truth. They will still look at it and say that it's a lie. Right. Refuse to acknowledge it. Acknowledge it. And that is what like literally April, the box of the mask (laughs) that you are continually to put three of them on says this does not stop or prevent. <laughs> and they, they, in their minds, they're like, I'm helping. It's, yes. it's helping. Yes. Because um, I'm had keeping it someone in. else safe. Mine. Right. So the combination of that and, you know, you know, I wasn't, I, it's Go just, there. Go there. I was just saying, well, that, and then, then, I need to do a, a separate show on, I call it the submuscular injectable biologic. I'm going to do a separate show on that because that needs to be discussed too, because there's a narrative going with that and people still don't believe it. And yet we, every week we meet someone else who has died suddenly um, out of nowhere. And Correct. yet Correct. no one is having the conversation Correct. and holding those that are in charge accountable for that. What I want to do is I want to talk about so when we discuss the P, the, the preacher component of the Afrostocracy and what you saw and experienced behind the scene, yes. when we transition that into the political sphere, I, as you know, I did a video um, during this last year's National Baptist Convention. Yes. And I did the video basically saying, you know, that the president and of the NBC needed to repent because how are you... A, con- a Baptist convention and you're supposed to be saved and a Christian and you allow the vice president of the United States to advocate openly for um, the murdering of babies in the womb mm-hmm. and you allow her to do so to the applause of the attendees and delegates of the convention. So that says to me, oh, is, is this the prevailing thought in the NBC that abortion is not a sin and that we, we need to be able to have uh, federal funds 
used to fund this this atrocity. Can you talk to me? Did you see any any of that type of messaging while you were on the road? Were you on the road during when Roe v. Wade was overturned? Yes, yes. When you touched on that one, I was like, I got to reach out to you. What you laid out was one, completely true, two, completely powerful, and but I had lived it. Mm. And um, so that I'll, I'll go, I'll take you back and then bring you forward. Yes. So uh, my introduction into NBC uh, USA was in 2014. It was actually for the president's, actually his campaign. That was when he was originally running. I did not know him personally, and, and I still have only had brief, I mean, in passing conversations. It's, right. it's not like we have each other's number or anything. I don't want to give that, you know, you know, try to give that imagery. Um, but what I saw then was, mind you, I'm coming from this guy who's worked with, you know, multiple denominations. I've never been to a convention. It was in New Orleans and April. My mind was blown because, again, what you are exposing and, and the other brothers you've had on, it was cemented there where we literally mimic. We have gotten so far off course. We are so convinced with mimicking the world mm -hmm. instead of being image bearers of Christ. And this is in the convention. So that's the problem. Right. But unless you I think you have to see it firsthand, like I, I could not tell you the difference there, to be honest with you, than probably what the DNC looked like 20 years ago. I won't say now because you'll have you know, all kind of trains running right. around and you, and you don't have that. Right. But other than that, the focus on campaigning and winning blew my mind and the type of things, the underhanded things that were done in, in subsequent campaigns. Why I told you I wanted to kind of back away from just being involved with that side. Mm -hmm. So in 2014, there was a pastor in Omaha who got up on the floor in the convention and he went off. And I don't think he's ever spoke at a convention since. He called people out about the only reason why we supported um, the, the extension of abortion and gay marriage is because Obama was black. And we think it's our job to follow him. And the thing about it is, in the audience, are you seeing them clapping up? Oh! preach and then continue to do like i said i don't think he's ever had a platform since and i it's actually like they hear it right and they know it's true but they're you not gonna the demoralization they're not gonna repent and turn correct but we'll we'll stand up and go through the motions and you better say it right uh -huh. we'll, we'll, we'll do that we'll go through all the black church churchiness right yes so i actually got a chance to see him uh last year and reminded him of it and I told him that was the reason I wasn't there for him. I was there for another project with the support our shields. But I called him and asked him, did he need anything because of the respect that I had for him standing, knowing that they weren't trying to hear that. And he probably if he ever had a chance at being a national president, that ended it that day. Yeah, he cut that. And so what happened in so that's 2014. What happened in 2015? Remember, this is. The all of the you know, we've got the original BLM when they first mm -hmm. star and Mike right. Brown and right. Freddie Gray. Right. OK, that's right. So a lot of the younger pastors woke. We just didn't know what it was then. Right. They were upset at Dr. Young because they didn't feel that he was saying the right message, which was about. He, he basically said in a speech, a speech, I'm paraphrasing, we need to be focused on prayer and, and more prayer and less protest. Right. And they couldn't stand. It. So that was, that was off code. Right. Exactly. Okay. I, I, and now I, I'm not a part of any, you know, private conversations after that. I don't know if what we saw this past year was him being, you know, like, I better get back 
in line. <laughs> in, in in line. line. Although I find that. Sh- that's the okay. Let me say this, April. That's the best case scenario I can give you, and I'll tell you why. I was in Kansas City, so New Orleans was 2014. Mm-hmm. 2016 was Kansas City. So when I saw your episode about what you know what was said, you know why it didn't surprise me because this is the same convention that in 2016 stood up for at least two minutes with a standing ovation for Hillary Clinton. You when I, told you, I wasn't making content back then, so... Guess that, it, that you know, was, but I, I was covering NBC, these. The NBC is like the bastard child of the Democratic Party. Correct. It's the, I call it the religious wing. Like you claim, they claim, they claim, the DNC claims the NBC when it's, yes. because it's useful because it's like... The National Baptist Convention has the ear and the attention and the heart of a huge swath of the Black American population. That is so we need right. them. That is um, and so, you know, we'll, we'll, w- was it Hillary that started talking about she won No Ways Tied? Exactly. Uh, that's what that was. Exactly. That was the she, she did it in multiple places. She, oh, she did no. it in multiple places. No. Is it working? And- <laughs> right, right, exactly. I, of course, I carried that around in my purse. Really? What I could not understand, April, was just the year before that, interviewing different leaders in auxiliaries and them saying how they care about family. Really? And I'm like, now again, maybe those individuals in particularly did not endorse her, but I'm like, why wasn't a ruckus cause because we know what you'll do. God forbid if that would have been Ron DeSantis, right. you would have lost your mind. Now, again, I mean, red carpet. Mm-hmm. When I tell you I was a beeline out of that convention center, done. That that was the end of the trip. Yes, you were like, for, I, you know, I, for me, I ended up going over to Kansas, the state of Kansas and <laughs> sitting alone in the woods. Now, fast forward to 2020, 2019. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. 20. Actually, no. 2020. Mm. Now it's the midwinter in outside of Dallas. Mm-hmm. So remind you, this is before COVID, but you've already had a reelection and you're trying to re- refocus. What's the platform this time? Mm. April, there was all this stress that night on we have to be better at our outreach. We've got to take the gospel to places where it's being rejected, where it's unpopular. Why do we have a disconnect between millennials and, and Gen Z and what we can do about that? Okay, we, 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 um, we, we um, bring in the new officers, you know, nationally. And Dr. Young gets up after that at the end of the night and says, I want y'all to all come back tomorrow night and make sure y'all hear Joe Biden. And we went to the airport the next morning and flew back home. So basically these. So this is why you saw Stacey Abrams on the black church circuit. This is why. So it's there isn't. Let's be Christians and examine what both sides have to say. No. And vote our Christian convictions. It's not that. It's here's who we're going to listen to. This is this is the message. Go and do likewise. Right. And, and let me let me go a little bit deeper into that, April, because it, it comes it, it it very it's very similar to what happened with COVID, right? Mm. So remind you, like you said, by the time October hits. We've been shut down for over uh, basically a half a year at that point. Right. Right. And so now what would have been done in church on Sundays, of course, it's still virtual, Mm -hmm. but we got a stump for the DNC candidate. So now we'll just do it video and we'll do it on social media. Mm -hmm. And I literally walked into an office, you know, um, you know, in, in in a church in a state. And he's being, he's on the pastor is being coached by someone else. 
Tell them their children's lives depend on it. Tell them their grandchildren's lives depend on it. All of the talking points. And I, I waited and set up in the sanctuary and he, he came out. He didn't go in that direction. And afterwards, this is what you were saying about the, the I call it cowards to comfort. And I'll come back to why I call it that. Mm. He was like, yeah, I didn't want to go into all of that because to be honest, you know, I know that they, they, you know, want us, you know, to support them, but they don't, they don't support biblical things. And they probably looked at him like, bro. bro but he bro. was just willing to say right. what he was being coached. Right. Let me right. what I'm He's being coached to say something. Right. Doesn't truly have that as a personal conviction. Right. But was like, I'm not, with, I'm not this abortion, this gay marriage. This is this is this is against the Bible. So preachers say that. Why? Why are they allowed to come in? Why are you? Why are you? Why are they being acknowledged at all? Correct. Like, why are we even in on the Lord's Day or whatever day? Like, why have our pulpits become uh, uh, the main stage for the campaign trail? Yes. Well, uh, I, I would I, I I would go back. That's not by accident either. I would give you. Let's see. I would give you 1963. Uh, Representative Albert Herlong read the into the U.S. Congress, the listed communist goals for the United States. Number 15, I believe it is, is infiltrate the churches and replace revealed religion with social religion discredit the Bible. And I believe number 12 is capture one or both political parties in the United States. Oh, when, okay. What you and Chad were talking about this past week, this is, this has been, this is an accident. April, nothing we're seeing is an accident. This has been a play long before we were born. We, we're catching up to it. And we're, it's, you know, our eyes are being open because now it's so obvious, mm -hmm. but yeah, I think many of them, they they've already been subverted. They may have been that before they ever got in those positions because, and I, I'll go to the, to when you said, let me jump to the uh, reversal. So that was, I, I don't know if you've seen the video I did on that, but I'm on the road, like you said, and to literally see a pastor, a guest pastor, because now they're back in person. Right. But you got to play the <laughs> six miles of separation game, right. you know, and the mask. And I, I was dumbfounded, Abra, because he literally says, you know, there's nowhere in the Bible wh where you want to talk about constitutional rights, but you want to take away my civil rights. And and when you did that video responding to the, the to the the clown bishop in Atlanta, mm. the fire that was in you was exactly what I felt, and I had to remove myself. I just stopped recording, April, because I'm like the next thing that's going to happen is that tripod is going to be thrown at the stage at the pulpit like as right. a javelin because I couldn't understand how people were clapping. Right. Other ministers encouraging him, say that, say that. I'm like, that is a complete and utter lie. Right. So I literally, you'll see in the video when you say, I, I like had to take myself out of the city, go out to this mountainside. And I called my wife and I said, I don't know how much longer I can do this. Right. And, and she, you know, we talked on the phone. She, you know, she, she talked me out. I, I was like, I was like, I'll fight this dude. <laughs> I was like, I'm, right. I mean, he makes I, you want to fight and throw right. him in. I, I said, I can't understand. It would be one thing. I mean, some of these same people, April, sat quiet. Now, this is, in this case, this individual is younger than us, but we know people that, that we know Margaret Sanger in that letter, what she said, we'll, who we'll use mm -hmm. to push this. You sat quiet for decades, for generations. And so that was more so uh, my experience of like uh, coming to the Lord, getting saved in 96 and then 99, like starting to first uh, do work with different ministries, like volunteering. Mm -hmm. And that was my eye opening of what the NAACP really stood for. When in 2000, Al Gore comes to speak and they stood up on chairs, 
stood up on chairs for someone who comp- and that and see and to that point April I had no idea we had had over 20 million of us just totally wiped out. Wiped out, right. And then that it was intentional. I didn't know that until that time. And I was like, wait a minute, how can you say you're for us, but you literally stand in support exterminating us? And the inventor of it said that this was her goal. What are we right. doing? Or even worse, people that look like you Correct. who know how many of us are being exterminated yes. and they still advocate for the extermination because you know, free will. Free will. Well, that's kind of where, yeah, he said that the Lord didn't take away our free will. He mm. he said that in this lie of a sermon. Right. And went all around. And so when you did your video on it and you talked about how a lot of this, they support it because it covers up extramarital activities. Okay. And like you said, we're not on here to call names, April, but I, I'm, I'm yelling at no one in the car, but the the dog's car seat and I'm like she ain't lying right I mean because if you think about it and there's there's a I call it a syndicate yes you know in the underground preacher world where yes. you know if married or not you know if you need a girl one can be made available to you and a lot of times in these circles said woman ends up pregnant and you need the evidence of that taken care of. So if there's an industry that's about to be threatened, of course they're going to want to protect that because yeah. now it becomes more difficult. Well, now we got to find a state where it's legal. Correct. And now I gotta, not only do I have to pay for the extermination of the evidence, now I have to, I got to cover travel expenses. Then she going to want to eat and stay overnight too. Like everybody's looking at their like pockets. Right. I mean, listen, y'all, y'all, I've, I've, I've been in the black church life for a very long time. Correct. And I have a lot of pastor friends. And you've been behind the scenes, April. That's a difference. A lot of the viewers may not understand that, you know, there's a part that's presented out front. And again, we're not saying that we're sitting here standing in final judgment of anyone, Mm -hmm. but there is a lot of ridiculousness that goes on, that is swept under the rug, that is accepted. Yeah. April, it's getting so bad now that when it becomes public, it's like I'm not resigning. You're not oh, resigning. And he's not. They're not going to resign. He just they're ran not- out of another man's house, butt naked. Hmm. <laughs> wife can catch you. You're not resigning. Um. They. Your wife do not beat down the mistress at Costco, and you got to come away from the convention. We had a local pastor here in my hometown who was cheating on his wife and left her while she was battling cancer and was like, oh, well, I mean, this is still my church. So yes. I this ship is going with, and then married the mistress. <laughs> He sure did. Broke up his whole family and home and then married the mistress. Yeah. And they're in ministry, co-pastoring <laughs> a church together. I'm talking with the 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 glossy sheet. Yes. And they got the, the headshots and yes. the, you know, yes. no, they do it up. Yes. And and, and the uh, saddest thing apart about that, April, is it's not as uncommon anymore. Mm-mm. And so when I'll jump back to what I said about this. You, you know where that's from to me? Mimicking, like I said, the, the, the preachers mimicking the politicians. Remember, I didn't have sex with that one. I did not have right. sexual relations with uh-huh. that woman. And then the minute you can't hide the evidence because science exposes you, what if right. you go run the TDJs? So he can lay hands on you. Yeah. So, but and and it could be you could be presented back to us. Right. As, well, he should be this. It's no problem. He's She's sanitized problem. now. Right. Exactly. And so you see this whole obsession with the term first lady. Where did that come from? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I've, I've been out. Titles. Right, exactly. We gotta have the, the the esteem and the title, right? Yes, that, yeah. We we gotta have these ga- big galas. What are we imitating? And like I said, when you did all oh, the politicians, right? Oh, see, so that went right it's over my head. All, right, it's like, been there all the time. The right. I mean, it totally mimics that. And so now we feel well. You know what? If 
April, if I got this situation on the side, well, then we, we don't have the CIA, but we'll handle it with my deacon. Right. We're the deacon board. Absolutely. Right.